Hello guys, this is Justin from MotoQuickie.com and in today's tutorial we're gonna be taking a look at creating grass in Moto. <coughs> Sorry, the, the grass is created in Moto with the help of the fur system. Now fur basically is it's a shader that you add to an object and it creates, it makes uh, fur grow out of that object. <coughs> So, the easiest way would be to create a plane. I'm going to create it uh, 1 meter by 1 meter. And let me just center it. And we're going to add a material to it. We're going to call it grass. And we're going to hop over to the render tab. So I can, uh, I can show you and explain to you about some of the parameters of grass. So we're going to go to add layer, it's under special fur material and if we switch over to final color output you're going to see that we're already getting a pretty decent uh, grass result. Now <coughs> the fur material, this is the, uh, the, the shader that controls everything related to our grass. Now all of these uh, settings that you see here uh, up to for kink and frizz are explained in detail uh, in the Moto help system so if you activate help and just click on any setting here it will open the help um, the help interface which is opened in a browser <laughs> and you're gonna see all the settings that are explained and I've I've read this myself a couple of times to make sure that I'm I'm prepared for this tutorial and it it wouldn't be very professional of me to go around and explain or basically read everything that's saying here about the fur so I'm just going to tell you uh, the settings that are most important to me in my workflow and I'm going to explain them in, in a manner that you will understand so let's start with the render density now the render density, this tells Moto how much of the, the fur to render in, in, the final, uh, in the final output. Now we also have a display density on the bottom here, which dictates how much of the, the, of the fur, of the original quantity of the fur is displayed in the viewport. Now we're not going to be bothered about that setting right now. So the render density, like I said, if you switch it to 20%, you're going to see less fur. Uh, you generally don't want to go above 100% as fur, as some of you may know, it impacts the render time uh, quite a bit. Next we have the seed, which uh, is a random number which should give you a different result. Next, the spacing. The spacing, the lower the spacing, the more, more fur you're gonna get in your scene. Uh, this is practically what happens. Uh, theoretically, the spacing uh, basically says how much space there is between individual strands of fur. Next we have the length, which does just that. The, the, the length of the strand. Now, uh, of course, the, these values here are scene dependent. So I have a plane that's, I'm sorry, <coughs> one meter by one meter. So if you don't know or you want to get an approximate result, you want to click automatic sizing, which gives a decent result. So next we have the width. Now the width says just that. What's the width of the strand? If we set this to 100%, you're going to see that we get, let me just zoom in here to show you, we're going to get some pretty thick strands of, uh, of grass here. Uh, the taper, uh, the taper is, uh, I'm just, I just increased that to show you the taper. So the taper says how much taper is going on. So if we set this to 100%, it's just gonna, the, the cylinder is gonna taper to the tip. So generally uh, for grass, uh, 
value of between 90 and 95 percent should be okay. I'm gonna switch the width here to 50 percent. Now another important setting uh, that we have is the type of the strand. So we have cylinders and strips. For grass, strips is better because cylinders uh, are basically cylinders. So uh, cylinders means that you get more geometry. More geometry means that it occupies more memory. More memory means that you get uh, longer render times. So I'm going to switch to strips and next we have the offset. The offset, I'm going to set it to 50 millimeters so you can see. The offset basically offsets the grass from the surface upon which it is created. So if we were, we were to set this to minus 5, um, sorry, minus 50 millimeters, uh, the grass is going to be under and under is not happening. Uh, it's it's not getting uh, any geometry here because it's of course under and it, it flattens basically so when you're creating grass I want to keep this at minus 0.1 millimeters so it looks that it's really sitting there next we have uh, an important setting uh, billboards what this does if we set it to trees uh, let me just switch to a more lighter part here. If we switch to trees, you're gonna get individual planes that are sticking out. So this can be used if you wanna create some trees uh, far away from the camera and you can assign alpha maps to these planes so you, you get fast trees. Of course you would have to tweak the spacing and the length and some of the other settings. Uh, leaves does exactly the opposite. It basically sets some leaves on uh, some planes, one polygon planes on the floor. Uh, this can be used to create um, leaves that are sitting on the ground. So you know, forest scene or whatnot. So I'm gonna turn it off for now. Next we have the max segments. Now the max segments, um, this tells us how many segments the grass has. I'm going to zoom in on a strand here and you're going to see that it looks pretty uh, unsmooth. That's because the, the max segments are set to 8. But of course if you're doing a close-up shot you would want to set this number uh, higher so you get more uh, resolution in your grass but for a distance shot like this one I wouldn't go above 5. Now we have <coughs> the strip rotation. Uh, strip rotation it basically rotates the strand so you would want to have a bit of strip rotation. Now an, a pretty important setting is the view frustum culling. Uh, the setting doesn't work in this scene particularly because view frustum culling is made for big scenes that have a lot of fur. What it does is it basically cuts out the fur that it's not in the camera view. So if you have a large field with grass it will only calculate and render the fur that is in the camera view. If you have view frustum culling off and you render it's gonna render slower if you have it on it's gonna render faster now adaptive sampling uh, it's <clears throat> it's a setting that helps you fine-tune your grass again it's recommended for uh, larger scenes uh, next we have remove base surface which does just that it removes the surface on which the grass is created uh, this helps when you want to have a different texture for your ground uh, or you can you can leave it and you can use a multiple uh, number of textures to create your ground next we have the use hair shader uh, this basically what it does it's it orients the specularity of the of the strand towards the camera 
And another important uh, setting that was, I think it was introduced in Moto 501, I can't, I can't remember exactly, uh, what it does is it makes, it, it renders the grass using the irradiance cache. So by default in Moto 501, if you don't have that setting ticked on, it will use uh, Monte Carlo to render, to, yeah, to render and illuminate the grass. So if if I zoom in here, kind of like that, and I then let me just enable GI, okay, and I render, you're gonna you're gonna see that we're getting a pretty noisy amount here. That's because the grass is rendered using Monte Carlo. So if you want a cleaner result, you must increase the indirect rays in indirect illumination. So if I set this to 1024, you're going to see that a lot of the noise is gone. But of course, the render time will go up. <coughs> I'm going to disable GI for now because it will update the, the preview faster. And again, the first shade uh, clumps, it dictates how many clumps we're getting. And if we set it to 5%, you're going to see that uh, it's the, the clumps are pretty big. And that's because the clump range is set quite high. So if we set it to a lower amount, you're going to see that we're getting uh, something different. Now, like I said, if you want to go ahead and dissect these settings, you can use the Moto Help system. It's very, very helpful, at least in this case. Uh, jitter, it basically it controls the randomness, the randomness of our grass. Fur kink and frizz, we're not going to be discussing right now because we're not going to be using them. So let's uh, let's make this scene a bit more interesting, kind of like I did with the header. Uh, image. I'm gonna I'm gonna show you the scene towards the end of the tutorial, but I'm gonna attempt to recreate it right now. So we're gonna create another plane which is gonna act as my shadow uh, catcher because I don't want to use any fancy uh, ground shader or anything like that. I'm gonna move it to a new layer. I'm gonna call this ground. I'm going to call this grass and I'm going to create a cube oops sorry and I'm going to make it smaller and I'm just going to bevel the edges a little bit I'm going to move it above okay And the camera is gonna put it like this. Want the shadow right there on the right. And now I'm gonna change. I'm gonna assign materials to my ground and to my cube. And I'm gonna mm, I'm gonna enable GI now. And I'm going to change my environment to physical base daylight. But before that, I'm going to duplicate it. I'm going to toggle only visible to camera. I'm going to untoggle this one to be visible to camera. I'm going to set it to physical base daylight. I'm going to set the light to have a spread angle of 2 and the radiant excitance to be 2. Okay. And now I'm going to move the ground above the base shader. I'm going to add another shader to it. And I'm going to change the alpha type to shadow catcher. There we go. And I'm going to assign I'm going to make my cube uh, orange color. And I'm going to put a bit of reflection on it. Kind of like that. Okay, and now let's talk about the grass because this is why we're here. I'm going to zoom in a bit. Okay, so now we want to fine tweak our grass so it renders acceptably. So right now 
it's not gonna render that slow um, but sometimes like I said in in bigger scenes it can uh, it can render slowly and see it's 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 already uh, crunching the, the grass right now so you see it it takes it takes a bit to render I'm gonna abort the render right now because I'm I'm okay with the view now when you're tweaking your grass you might wanna have oh that's why it was rendering so slow I'm gonna turn this down to 64 I'm not really interested in quality right now so I'm gonna turn off my global illumination because I want to see the the grass update more faster so now the spacing I'm gonna put the spacing to something like five millimeters millimeters okay and the length uh, 60 is about okay I'm gonna leave it at 62 the offset is okay taper okay with okay uh, strip rotation yeah it's okay I'm gonna leave it like that uh, adaptive sampling now I want this adaptive sampling to be on in my scene and automatic fading and I want the fur rate to be set to two. I, you, you, you want to play with these settings, uh, just to make sure you're getting the, the the result you want. So these settings might not work for your scene. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna remove the base surface, and I'm gonna use the hair shader. I'm gonna go in here. I'm gonna check conserve energy. I'm gonna put the color to be. Whitish, because we're gonna color it later using a, a gradient, and I want to have two percent reflection with thirty percent Fresnel. Okay, and that's about it. You might wanna use subsurface scattering for your grass. Uh, I didn't use it in the image uh, that's uh, on the header of the tutorial but it sometimes it can give uh, better nicer results and sometimes it might not so let's, let's just use it for this tutorial but uh, I didn't use it okay and we're just gonna we want a tiny bit of uh, of subsurface scattering not not too much okay and you can see some of the green leaking through okay and we have the uh, fur material here and we're gonna go over to fur shade and I'm gonna set my clumps to 10 percent and the clump range is gonna be 12 millimeters okay strays 3 percent and now let's play with the jitter now I want the position and direction jitter to be fairly low I do want the growth jitter to be 70 percent and size jitter to be 60 okay and another thing that I'm gonna use is I'm gonna use a noise uh, I'm just gonna leave it at the defaults but I'm gonna change uh, the the effect here. I'm gonna change it to fur length. Okay, and I'm gonna change the opacity of it. I'm gonna change it to 30% because I don't want it to influence my fur that much. Uh, of course, you can play around and maybe set it to uh, fur density or I don't know. Um, let's let's uh, let's leave it at fur density, 60% opacity. Okay, and now let's let's color our uh, grass. Now you would generally go about this on going in here and changing the color, but as you can see, that doesn't give us a very uh, realistic grass. So I'm going to use a gradient to color it. So you can find the gradient under Processing, Gradient, and the default input parameter is set to Incidence. Now we don't want to use that. We want to use for parametric length don't use fur length because it doesn't uh, it won't give you the result that you're looking for so I'm gonna edit my gradient and in this gradient window here 0% represents the root of the grass and 10% represents the tip so 
So I'm going to add another uh, key here and set it to 100%, value 1. I'm going to zoom in on these two. And now between 0 and 100%, I'm going to add a bunch of keys. So I want the root to be brownish, like the ground. And I want it to start at around 10%. So around 10%, let me just rotate the camera a bit so you can take a look. And you, you can see some of the brown right there. And we want it to fade into a more greenish color, but still dark. And we can make the fade distance a bit bigger. Okay. And now comes this middle part between 40 and 60-70%. This will give us the, the general look of our uh, grass. So you might want to tweak this one a little. Next we have the tip. Uh, we're going to leave those middle keys right now untouched. So the tip we want it to be yellowish. Yellowish green like that and we want it to limit just to the tip here so I'm gonna pick another yellowish green uh, color for the keyframe right behind it and now this one is gonna be again another uh, green and if you want to add more diversity you can add this one to be like that and now if we enable global illumination See, it's, we went a bit overboard. The colors are way too saturated, but for this example, it's gonna it's gonna work. Okay, and I'm gonna set the ambient intensity to zero. And all we have to do now is just render the image. And depending on your machine, this might take a bit, but as you can see from our previous attempt to render, this is rendering quite fast. And you see, we're not seeing that noise that we saw when we zoomed in on the grass but I'm gonna guarantee that if we zoom in we're gonna see the noise and we're gonna have to up the rays so uh, if you're doing close-up shots you want to have more indirect rays if you're doing some further shots the indirect rays can either stay at 64 or in the worst case it can be like 256 if you're doing this for print because you don't want any noise. Now another cool thing about grass in Moto is that you can use maps to uh, to control the density and basically every aspect of the fur. I'm just gonna show you a quick one with the density here. So I'm gonna switch over to Advanced OpenGL. I'm gonna go over to Paint and I'm gonna go over to Utilities I'm gonna add color texture, call this density, save, okay, okay, and we can paint. So let's say we have <coughs> a field of grass, let's imagine this is our field, and you want to have a road right in the middle. So you can go over to the paint tools, I'm gonna select an airbrush, soft brush, nozzle, and I'm gonna paint I'm gonna paint black so I'm gonna paint it black uh, I'm gonna choose a paintbrush so I'm just gonna paint it black uh, the images that you use to control those settings are black and white images so I'm gonna fill it with black and next I'm gonna select the airbrush and I'm just gonna I'm just gonna draw oops need to select white so I'm just gonna draw something like that right through the middle so if you want to have uh, right now so remember it's using the value all the values between black and white so right now this is not pure white this is gray so if you want to have a road without any grass uh, you might wanna go ahead and just make sure that's pure white uh, you can you don't have to do this in moto uh, you can do it in photoshop but uh, in Moto it's easier because if you have a sculpted terrain or something that's 
uh, I don't know, easier to paint in 3D rather than 2D, uh, you want to do it uh, inside Moto or any other uh, uh, 3D painting application, ZBrush, Mudbox, whatever. So if we switch over to render now, you're going to see that we're getting a funky result. And that's because uh, right now the density, the, the image that we created, is set to diffuse color. And we want it to be set to fur density. And you're going to see that we're going to get fur right in the middle where we had white. That's no problem. We can just stick invert and it's going to invert. Now, of course, we're going to have uh, a few strays here. Uh, not really sure if they are fixed if you set the strays to zero. They should be, but they're not. So you may want to play around with it, but it's it's pretty pretty good. So if if you had um, remove base surface off, okay, you're gonna see that we're getting we're getting something. It's, it's pretty pretty good. So. Uh, that's about it for this one. Uh, you can also use uh, text or I don't know <clears throat> anything to create images of grass. So I'm gonna wait for your images in the submission uh, form here. Also, uh, it's not the end yet. I still have to show you the scene from the header and I want to show you another cool thing uh, is that you can uh, grass close-up shots work well <coughs> sorry work well with uh, depth of field so I'm gonna enable depth of field here and right now it's uh, pretty bumped up but I'm gonna change the focus distance of the camera to be right in front of it so right there okay <coughs> and we want the f-stop to be somewhere like 5 for this scene and let's just say 3 iris blades, iris rotation uh, these are not important because it, they're more like uh, their settings for the bokeh effect okay and if we set now in order to get a clearer depth of field we need to make sure that our anti-aliasing samples are set to at least 64 and uh, the filter can be anything right now it doesn't really matter so let's render this it's gonna take a bit to render because of the uh, because of the of the depth of field but you're gonna see that the result is gonna be pretty pretty cool in the end Let me just pause the recording and resume when it's done. And it took about 1 minute and 17 seconds to render, but as you can see, we got a pretty nice result. Again, uh, we should have put the segments a bit higher for this uh, zoomed in render, but I think overall it looks, it looks quite good. I'm actually thinking that this would look even more nicer than the current header image, but <clears throat> whatever. So uh, that's about it for this scene. Let me just show you the scene that's <clears throat> the header image right now. It's quite similar to this one, except that the, the grass was, uh, was tweaked a bit more. And it's, it's basically identical. I used a noise for the fur density and a cellular, cellular for the fur clumps. And the fur material is made for the scene. Uh, I have a gradient which is designed uh, roughly the same as the gradient in our scene and just a cube right in the middle to show you how grass interacts with the cube. Now again you would want to have an ambient occlusion output for the scene it's not mandatory but uh, sometimes it's good. Now <clears throat> uh, ambient occlusion on grass it does a pretty good job but sometimes you may not want to use it and I'm gonna show you a trick right now if you don't want to use uh, if you don't want to, to see the ambient mean, occlusion on the grass you can uh, put the grass above the base shader and you can add 
a shader to it and you tick if you tick visible to occlusion rays that should ease the effect and will probably uh, be more closer to uh, to what you want uh, that's about it for this uh, this image and this tutorial uh, thanks for watching and don't forget to submit your images to the gallery to see what bright ideas you have. So I'll see you next time.